What's up, everybody? I hold shift here, and this is what's raging. Well, how can you not talk about it? It is HRX time, and with that comes qualifications and, of course, the playoff finals. We're going to start things off. The way we're going to kind of run things to give you guys the real inside knowledge is to do just round at a time. So we're going to do all of round one predictions, even though there are only four games going on tomorrow on Monday and then another four on Tuesday. We're going to go ahead and just do all of the round one. We'll do all of the round two plus the loser's bracket round one tomorrow. And we'll just kind of go like that as we do. You know, you got to <laughs> We got to do it. We got to do it to them. First things first. I'm realist, realist. SK Gaming starts off against Kanga Esports. Kanga, Kanga. It's Kangaroo, so it's Kanga. Don't call it Kanga. I don't know who would ever do that. Let's talk about SK first and foremost, as they are technically listed as being the higher seed here as the number eight seed overall debatable at best they are one in seven after the north american ppl split the throner wi-fi pan and vocal bitey the five that are going in a lot of switch ups from what we've been hearing as far as who's actually playing what the bitey's listed as being the frontline player but i'm pretty sure he's gonna be playing support regardless there's a lot of questions about this team and flat out this team is just not good there's not very good. So as they go up against Kanga, what to expect? What are we going to be seeing? Who's going to be doing what? Who's going to be doing not what? Who's going to be the one leading? I'm looking at Pan and Wi-Fi to be the team. The real two crucial teammates here. I think in vocal, solid player. I don't think Bitey can mess up too much on support. The Throner has been pretty substantial throughout most of the PPL. As far as his consistency goes, I'm looking at Pan needs to pop off and Wi-Fi needs to perform better than he has throughout the entire PPL. Kanga Esports in the meanwhile, Four of the five guys that were back in the summer are back again here for the fall. Osirino, Chronix, Ninum, and Joel's Ninum being the newer addition with Osirino this year. And they're actually adding in Corland, who is a name from the Australian scene, but has never really found much success as of late. So can this 6-0 team from Oceana do anything against SK? My thinking? Yes. They absolutely do have a potential to take a, down one of their first PPL teams in a long time because SK is just not very good. However things about it i've got sk winning this one at a score line of two to one uh it's gonna be a close one though i think that you can expect to see a lot of different things uh, going through here i don't think it's going to be just one team or the other i think this is going to be uh, a really really close game uh through and through so don't sleep on anybody in this because it could very well be a very close game Match number two of the day, we'll see Sanguine Esports, the number one team out of the NAPGS, taking on Virtus Pro, the not so great Virtus Pro, but better than maybe before, but maybe not two and six team from the EU PPL. Surrettes, Perdo, Ninu, Elven Path, and Sheepa will be going in. And technically, again, they do have the higher seed here. They're going in as the number four seed, which was questionable in my eyes as we looked at it first and foremost, but whatever. That's the way it goes. And Sanguine is actually going in as the 13 seed, which I think is very low, to be completely honest. But this is going to favor uh, that Sanguine team because Virtus Pro is a very defensive-minded team. They don't play super aggro. They look at Nino to try to get some poke damage before they really convert and move. Meanwhile, Sanguine have five dudes who have been playing on land since the Vegas land way, way back this year. Now, does this team have a chance to beat Virtus Pro? I think resonantly, yes, they absolutely do. In fact, I think this team wins against Sanguine, or pardon me, wins against Virtus Pro. I've got this one going 2-1. You cannot sleep on this Sanguine team. I actually have this team going relatively far. One of the probably PGS teams that you need to look at for potentially making it through the top four. And again, this is all best of three sets. I don't like that. I wish that later on in the series we saw some best of fives because some of these teams, some of these games are going to be really close. Virtus Pro, I see taking off their map, but I don't see them beating Sanguine on their, uh, their their map. And then the follow up, the third map, I don't I don't see them winning. I just think that their record and what they've been playing has not been working out very well. And those matchups do favor the side of Sanguine. So I see them taking this one 2 one to move on to the next round. Next up, we're seeing what was one of the more surprising teams in North America at certain points, but did not have the results. We really bode much of a quote-unquote surprise for the PPL. It is the one in seven splice roster going up against SEA's team Rider. I have to be upfront with this. Who are any of these players on Team Rider? The only person that even rings a bell is I am Ray because he's played on a number of teams before, but nobody else rings a bell. They did go six and zero in Southeast Asia, but this is a region that has never done well ever at land. Flat out, they've never won a game 
at land. So to go up against Splice, one of the worst NA PPL teams, you'd be thinking here saying, oh, well, they might have a shot. The answer is absolutely not. Splice is going to take this set at a pretty convincing 2-0. I think that these guys, although they're not really all that well land tested, I think that their ability to kind of show up and get themselves warmed up will actually lead to them playing better throughout the longevity of the tournament. So look out for Splice to turn some heads. But first and foremost against Team Rider, this is an easy 2-0. Just call it where it is. Splice moves on, no problem. Then we come up to a very interesting set. This will be this will actually be the last game of the day tomorrow on Monday, where Renegades will take up against Big Egos, the number two NAPGS team, with a couple of names that I'm obviously familiar with from a couple of other experiences. But also, these guys have been around for quite some time when it comes to being in the PGS and trying to establish themselves as potentially being PPL players. We are going to be seeing them going up against Renegades, who has had a lot of question marks um, this entire PPL. They end up going 4-4, four and four, but all of those wins were against teams that they should have beat. They beat Splice and SK twice. Good for them. Who cares? Now, Big Eagles on the other side, they only lose their two games to uh, Sanguine in their matchups. And they've got a couple of interesting team numbers here. you got William355, who we're all pretty familiar with. T-Mac, Edgem, who was a hitscan, we'll say, player. <laughs> I won't call him a god, but he was good. He was a hitscan player in the Lawbreakers days. Uh, really, really talented dude. Really young, though. I will use that as a caveat. We have also have Neo and Quick, who's been kind of floating around the scene for God knows how long without much relevance. So, big egos. Do they have a chance at taking down Renegades? Maybe. But if it was somebody besides Renegades, I would say yes. The fact of the matter is it's Renegades. They're more battle-tested on land, even though they don't ever really perform on land. And to be fair, this is the first line that they've earned a spot to in a long time, considering that they're usually the, hey, this team couldn't make it. Can you guys fill? Sure, why not? They haven't really been at a land that they deserve to be at. Finally, they get a chance to kind of prove their worth. They will prove their worth here. I've got this one going 2-0, favoring the Renegades. Unfortunately for Big Eagles, they're going to find themselves in the loser's bracket after their first. Then to start off what will be Tuesday, we'll see Space Station Gaming going up against Mouse Sports, the 5-1 team from Brazil. They did not win out their PGS scene completely uh, without tarnishment. And Mouse Sports, the 0-8 PPL team who don't find a single win in PPL as usual. This will be the first PGS team to definitively wipe the floor with a PPL team. Mouse Sports, they're all over the place. Alex was the addition. Bolka and support has done okay. They haven't really found a way to let those guys show off, though, a little bit. Alex, after playing in the summer land, was really, really well found, I think, from PGS player, but he's had very little success because mostly simple fact of the matter is NTB's and crew up front have not provided much space for him to do anything. On the flip side, you're dealing with Space Station Gaming, a team that honestly had a couple of strange drops and moves around, but the fact of the matter is Freeze God's there, and they bring in Sadhok from previously Nocturne's Burrito, uh, and I'm excited to see this edition of Sadhok coming in. He's going to be playing listed as the support, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him going on to a couple of flex tanks as he used to do back in the days of Burrito. I'm excited for the Space Station Gaming. The only problem is do I think that they're on the level of cohesion that the former Burrito Gaming or Space Station Gaming was when they had their upstart performances? If you're talking about Burrito from back when they were actually just Nocturnes, last HRX in January, and then you take a look at Space Station, who had a really good run throughout the spring and a good showing in the summer. I don't think this team is as good as either of those teams were, but they are good enough to 2-0 Mouse Sports, without a doubt. I don't think Mouse Sports puts up... They'll put up a fight. I think these are going to be closer games, but I'm pretty sure at this point in time, looking at the Space Station roster, I have more faith in them than I've ever seen out of anything from Mouse Sports. So Space Station will take this one 2-0 and move on to meet Renegades, in my opinion. And then another interesting game will be Zaga taking on Sour Team, the number two team from the EU PGS going up against the Latin American 6-0 juggernaut of Zaga talent. No Hikate. We don't get to see him. We don't get to see people that we're used to seeing from Latam, and that's going to be a sad day. No, what we do is we'll go, okay, well, we will see Puliuli Again, after what had happened, uh, there was a big split up with, with all the players from Burrito, which caught us all by surprise. Puliuli will be joining the forces of Zaga talent with a couple of extra names like Moondog and Exterminia, and there's a couple of questions about this team because they're coming in with two subs. I don't know much about Zetha, to be completely honest. I don't know much besides just watching video on him. But Farriul is a guy who's been in the scene for a very long time. He'll be coming in to play support, and he will likely do a pretty decent job. I can't imagine him doing much of a worse job than Crimson, who got absolutely smacked in the Summerland. So seeing these guys come in, it's a little bit different up front because you're not seeing Fuzzy Logic, you're not seeing Hikate, you're seeing Puliuli without Sadhok. So it's going to be weird to see this team go, 
but I honestly think that this team has a chance to really make a run at it. They're in the number three seed, which is very favorable for them considering who else is in their side of the bracket. They go up against Sour Team, who is a team that, again, is relatively unknown with the exception of Second and Hayes, who are two players that we're all familiar with if you follow anything PGS EU related over the last year and a half. And those guys are going to be the ones that I'm looking at to carry this team. But the fact of the matter is, I just don't think they're going to be able to do it against Zaga Talent. I've got Zaga winning this one 2-0 to move on, no problems. And then the only other matchup that will be in a region is the EU scene. Well, technically, EU CIS, but we'll, we'll consider it just all EU. Let's be real. Team Cryptic will be going up against Armada, and a lot of people are underestimating Armada, I think, flat out. I think what we saw them do in the summer was very impressive. I think that they came out, they played, they looked good. People are starting to give them, I think, a little bit less credit than they deserve, considering the fact that they've been to land now, the third land in a row that they've been to. Actually, beyond that, a couple of them have been to more than that, as they were able to represent the CIS beforehand. So as you take a look at Armada with Coriel, Ovim, Ineffable, and then you also see Please Do and Ragnarok coming through. This team is 5-1 and one in CIS, but I think that that goes more to show how strong the CIS has gotten, not that Armada has gotten worse. Meanwhile, Team Cryptic, only 4-2 and two again, like Sour Team. They come through with a number of players that nobody knows anything about. Kamaker and Gruffies are probably the two that everyone recognizes. Sadzik, Toot Toot, Arrays. Who are they? Who knows? No one really cares. But here's the thing about it. This is going to be a really, really, really good game. I have this one going down to the wire. I think at the end of the day, though, you're going to see Team Cryptic take this one. I think it's going to be close. I have this one going 2-1, favoring Cryptic. Armada very well could win this matchup, though. And if they do, they have a chance to really run, I think. But if they don't win this game, they have to go through the loser's bracket. It's going to be a really long run for them. I would have loved to see them take on Zaga, but I think it's going to be Team Cryptic moving on with this one at a 2-1 scoreline. It's going to be a good game, though. You're not going to want to miss this one. I think it's going to be pretty telling of how good this Cryptic team is, or on the flip side, is Armada actually ready to prove themselves at a major international qualifier like this one? That's all I got, though, for round number one. We'll be going through round number two, as well as the first part of the loser's bracket tomorrow. You don't want to miss that one for the honest take. And we'll also be talking about if my predictions actually matched up with what actually happened uh, in the early parts of the day. So don't miss it. We'll be back tomorrow with the first parts of round two, as well as the loser's bracket predictions. We'll catch you guys next time. I've been Shift, and that's been what's raging. Hold on to your seats, boys and girls. It's going to be a wild ride for the next five days. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.